Hello and welcome to another UNM CARC Quick Byte tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create your own software environments using Conda. In a previous Quick Byte, I showed you how to use um, predefined environment modules that we have created and that you'd need to contact us to create new ones. With Conda environments, you can create your own um, software environments, so you can run the software that you need. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is load a Conda environment. So I'm going to type module load. And I'm going to use Miniconda for this demo. So I just type mini, hit tab to autocomplete Miniconda. Now the way that uh, Conda works is it has a bunch of repositories and packages that it knows about. And when you request installation, it goes out to the internet to those repository servers, pulls the software you need, figures out all the dependencies or the other pieces of software that might be required and installs them all in your home directory. Um, so for example, if I do CD Conda here, and I look at packages, you can see that there are lots of pieces of software here. These are um, previous software packages I've installed with Conda. Typically, you don't ever need to worry about this hidden directory, this .conda. I just want you to understand that's all that's happening. It's pulling software from the internet and putting it into your home directory so you can access it. And that means that your software installation is customized to you. It's just in your home directory. Anybody else who might install different packages in Con with Conda uh, in their own home directory would have a different set of packages here. Let's go back to the home directory. All right. You might be curious um, if you're if you've used Conda before, about the difference between Miniconda, which is what I just loaded, and Anaconda. They are both um, tools that provide access to these Conda packages. Anaconda just has a lot more packages sort of um, pre-downloaded or ready to go. Miniconda has access to all those packages too. It's just it has to go get them from the internet each time. Um, I prefer to use Miniconda because then I don't have to worry about updating all those prefetched packages, keeping them up to date. Miniconda will do that for me automatically since it goes out to the internet for anything, everything anyway. All right, so let's take a look at the version of Conda that we've got here. So Conda-V, and also that confirms the command, Conda command really is available. So let's go ahead and install um, a software package. You can see how this works. So I'm going to type conda create dash n. Uh, let's call it quick byte numpy. So what I'm doing here is I'm entering conda commands that will create a new software environment for me that I can load later anytime I need the software that I've installed into that environment. So conda create dash n just tells the system what the name of the environment is going to be. I'm just going to call it quick byte numpy. And I'm going to install the numpy package. So numpy is um, a numerical uh, recipes library for Python. It's very useful. And I'll use that for an example right now. And I'll come back to this example um, for other tutorials where we rely on this quick byte numpy environment. All right. I hit enter. As I said before, it goes out to the internet to look up the packages needed to support numpy. It gives a little warning here about numpy not being the latest version. Um, it's our job to maintain that version. This is not something that you will be able to update yourself. Conda prompts me um, to accept the list of packages it found. So these are all the dependencies that were required to install NumPy. In particular, I want you to notice this MKL library. This is the math kernel library that is provided by Intel. Um, and that speeds up processing quite significantly. So we'll accept this list. It downloads those packages from the repositories and installs them into that .conda directory that I showed you earlier.
One nice thing about Conda is that, um, as you saw before, I have lots of other packages already installed. So it in intelligently figures out which packages were already downloaded and are available and doesn't go um, to fetch those from the internet unless they're in newer versions. To see a list of the Conda environments that um, exist under my home directory, I can type Conda info dash dash envs for environments. And here they all are, including the QuickByte NumPy environment that we just created. And it shows you the path where those um, packages for NumPy were installed. All right, so um, I'm showing you a, a NumPy example. This works for thousands of other packages, um, particularly bioinformatics packages, but all sorts of things. So um, this is just an example of one particularly common package that you might install. So let's check to see whether, or let's, let's look at how you actually use that NumPy package now that we've installed it under this uh, Conda environment. The first thing I'm going to do is load the environment with Conda activate. So Conda Activate and the environment name will give us access to the software that was installed in that environment. And you notice how the prompt changes to include the name of the environment we're in now. And to demonstrate that the NumPy library is available, I'm just going to open Python here and import the library. Import NumPy. I didn't get any errors, so it was able to find the library. Uh, again, this is just an example with Python. If you want to store other packages, um, you might use an entirely different language or just run the binaries without even loading Python. Now I'm going to deactivate this environment. Now we're ba back in the base environment. So we don't have NumPy installed in this environment. And to prove that, uh, let's start Python again. And I'm going to try and import that NumPy library and it can't be found this time because, again, I'm not in that environment we just created. One of the nice things about Conda environments is I can share them with other people. So if I set up a software pipeline for bioinformatics or whatever I'm working on, and a colleague wants to use that same pipeline, I can export those tools or the information about how to get those tools and give that to the other person. So to do that, I type Conda env export dash n for the name of the environment and let's do our quick byte numpy and I'm going to send that to a file that I can share it's called myenv.yml and now this file myenv.yml contains all the information the other person needs to uh, create that environment and the way they do that is with conda env create dash f for file and then the name of the file. Now in this case, that environment obviously already exists, so it didn't create it. But what I could do is I could email this file to my colleague they would run it in their own environment, and it would create this QuickByte NumPy or whatever it is you've, you've set up um, right there for them. I'd like to be able to search for packages that are available through Conda, and I can do that with the Conda search command. So for example, if I wanted to install SciPy, which is a collection of scientific um, libraries for Python, I can type Conda search SciPy, and here are all the different versions that it found um, in the various repositories. Uh, as another example, if I wanted to install something called Chime, it tells me when I search this time that Chime is not available. That's because it's looking at a fairly limited set of repositories for Chime um, by default. But I happen to know that Chime is available through another repository called Bioconda. So I can specify that. I can say conda search dash c for channel bioconda chime. 
And here it shows me the available versions of Chime through the Bioconda channel. Okay, so that's a brief overview of how to set up your own custom software installations on the Wheeler system. Um, there's one more thing I'd like to do before I end this video, which is create a, an environment we're going to use for future Quick Bytes when we look at um, parallel processing. So I'm going to install, uh, I'm going to create a new environment called Quick Bytes. I'm going to install NumPy as before. And this will also give me an opportunity to show you how to um, add additional packages to existing environments. Now I'll load that environment. And I can add packages to it with conda install. So I'm going to add a package called mpi4pi that we'll use in a, a future um, tutorial on parallel processing. And I can list the packages in this environment with conda list. And here they are, including NumPy that we installed and MPI4Py. If I want to remove a package, for example, if I want to remove that uh, QuickBytes NumPy environment that I had earlier, I can type conda and remove and the name of the environment. Now this deletes the environment completely. I'd have to recreate it if I wanted to use the packages in there again. Oops. You know, dash N there to specify the name. We see that that uh, QuickBite NumPy environment that I created at the beginning of this tutorial is gone. All right. Um, I'm going to end the video there, but I hope to see you again for other Quick Byte tutorials. Bye bye.